From Hot Wheels, Barbie, and Star Wars figures to Beanie Babies, Furby, Beyblades, and Bratz, the next toy craze is just around the corner. What decade does your favorite toy fit into? The 1950s. The 50s were an interesting time for toys. The decade saw the creation of some of the greatest toys that are still around today. Previously known as a wallpaper cleaner, Play-Doh was now introduced as a toy, transforming into a type of modeling clay for kids. While the hula hoop was not invented in the 1950s, the decade popularized the plastic version. People were spinning around like there was no tomorrow. The first Barbie doll was also introduced during the 50s. These became the first toy dolls with adult features to be mass produced in the United States. Barbies proved to be very popular, but the boys generally preferred to play with matchbox cars, which were a hit of the era. Toy Story made Mr. Potato Head famous again in the 90s, but the original toy is from the 50s. At that time, the toy did not include a plastic potato. Mr. Potato Head came with plastic parts that were meant to attach to a real potato. That may sound pretty cool, but not too pleasant when the potato began to rot. Yuck! The Magic 8 Ball also entered the market during the 50s. It was supposed to tell the future and answer your yes or no questions. Maybe it's because we're naturally curious creatures that the Magic 8 Ball will never truly lose its appeal. The 1960s Matchbox dominated the market for toy cars in the 50s, but the following decade saw Mattel's Hot Wheels enter the market. The two were competitors for years, but became part of the same parent company in 1997 when Mattel bought the Matchbox brand. The slip and slide arrived in the 60s, which was a simple, long plastic sheet you connected with a garden hose. People could now create a mini water park in their own backyard. Battleship and Twister made their debut in the same year. These have become timeless classics that are still widely enjoyed today. The 60s also saw the release of the game Operation. A student at the University of Illinois by the name of John Spinello invented the game. Operation was sold to the American board game manufacturer Milton Bradley for only $500. That paled compared to the millions of dollars Milton Bradley earned on the game. John Spinello never got any royalties because of the deal he made. He and his wife even ended up filing for bankruptcy as Spinello struggled to pay his bills. Hasbro, who now owns Milton Bradley and the Operation game, offered to buy Spinello's original game prototype. Exactly how much Hasbro paid for the prototype is unknown, but we're happy the creator of Operation got some credit and the money he deserved. Another popular toy of the time was the Etch-a-Sketch. It was a drawing toy with two dials and a glass screen, which used aluminum powder to create an image. You could draw whatever you wanted and then get rid of it with a shake of the screen, allowing you to start a brand new sketch. It was truly spectacular at the time. Other staples of the 60s included the Easy Bake Oven and G.I. Joe action figures. The 1970s During the 1970s, advertising executive Gary Dahl became a millionaire by selling what was known as the Pet Rock. That might sound ridiculous, and quite frankly, that's because it was. Pet Rocks were stones in cardboard boxes. But the appeal came from the advertising that made the boxes resemble something that would contain real, live pets. The idea was that the pet rock would be the ultimate pet. It would never need to be fed, groomed, or walked. This was a novelty toy that had a limited shelf life. Nerf launched the Nerf Ball in 1970, which was labeled as the world's first official indoor ball. In just its first year, around 4 million were sold. Skateboarding was considered passé before Frank Nasworthy invented urethane wheels. These wheels revolutionized skateboarding, making the ride smoother and faster. Teens soon bought skateboards and took to the streets. 
It was in 1972 that Atari's Pong became the world's first commercially successful video game. The game was like tennis, with the player moving an in-game paddle to volley a ball back and forth. Pong's simplicity was part of its charm. Anyone could play Pong. The success of the Atari game set the stage for all future video games. If you're digging this video so far, then take a sec and hit that like button and subscribe. The 80s. The 80s continues to have a special place in today's pop culture. One example is the Netflix series Stranger Things, which has successfully made 80s culture appeal to a modern audience. The show has showcased many of the popular toys from that decade. Toys based on movies and television shows were very popular during this time. This included Ghostbusters, Gremlins, G.I. Joe, Care Bears, My Little Pony, and He-Man and She-Ra. But that's only a few in a long list of many. Transformers were very popular with kids. The toys were unlike anything else because they were able to shift between robot and vehicle form. Getting a Transformers toy was like having two toys in one. But the most popular movie-related toy brand was Star Wars. The 80s saw the release of the second and third movies from the original trilogy. The adventures of Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Chewbacca resonated with fans everywhere. The Star Wars movies did not have product placements, but at the same time, everything in the movies was a product placement. Fans were collecting action figures of all the different characters and toy vehicles found in the Star Wars universe. The fabric dolls known as the Cabbage Patch Kids also entered the toy market of the 80s. When first released, most stores in the U.S. only had a few hundred of the Cabbage Patch Kids in stock, but there was overwhelming customer demand which could not be met. The result? Customers fighting each other over the dolls. Not limited to physical toys, the 80s was home to many iconic video games that have since achieved a legendary status. The list of games includes Pac-Man, Tetris, Donkey Kong, and many more, which kids were probably playing by putting a quarter in the machine at the arcade. The 1990s when the calendar rolled over to the 90s, interest in digital entertainment continued to ramp up. The Nintendo 64 was released towards the end of the decade and is still considered to be one of the greatest game consoles of all time. It played some of the greatest games, including The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64, GoldenEye 007, and Banjo-Kazooie. Nintendo also released the Game Boy Color during this decade, with Sony releasing the very first PlayStation. Digital entertainment continued in another form with the ultimate toy gadget, the Tamagotchi. A Tamagotchi was your own handheld digital pet. Owners had to give their Tamagotchi the love and care it needed. Failure to do so would eventually result in its untimely passing, but it could also perish of old age. But not to fear, Tamagotchi owners were able to restart the game after their pet passed on. Toy company Tai introduced the world to Beanie Babies in 1993. Unlike traditional stuffed toys, the Beanie Babies traded conventional soft stuffing for plastic pellets. Within a short period of time, Ty's product lineup had expanded to include hundreds of animals. Beanie Babies were a hit and were enjoyed by kids and adults alike. The kids played with them, the adults collected them, hoping for a future payday. The 2000s Barbie dolls continued to be popular in the 2000s, but Bratz became a rival competitor when they entered the doll market in 2001. Much like Barbie, Bratz had their own cartoons, movies, and detailed storylines. Interesting characters and stories proved to be a good way to sell toys. That's what LEGO learned, and they used it to their advantage with Bionicle. The original Bionicle line had a 10-year run that lasted the entire decade. An original story was told through novels, comics, ads, games, movies, and online content. The success of Bionicle encouraged LEGO and other companies to use narrative storytelling to sell their products. An audience continued to exist for animal toys with high interest in Furby. 
Furby was a robotic, owl-like animal that spoke Furbish, but would learn English over time. In a way, owning a Furby was supposed to emulate owning a small pet. People were also buying robot dogs, which were often meant to be an alternative to real dogs. They were fun, but they could never replace the real thing. Before the age of the iPod, kids used hit clips. Hit clips were originally given out in McDonald's Happy Meals, but the popularity pushed hit clips onto the actual toy market. Kids used hit clips to listen to music from their favorite artists, including InSync, Destiny's Child, and Hilary Duff. But hit clips was not a proper MP3 or digital audio player. Hit clips owners were only able to listen to one minute clips. If they wanted more music, they had to go out and buy new music cartridges. Popular among tween girls of the day was the My Password Journal. This electronic journal had a voice-activated lock to protect your secrets. The journal had an intruder alert to fend off those who were not welcome, like pesky little brothers. Beyblades were crazy popular during the 2000s, and so were Robo Sapiens and Zuzu Pets. The decade also started experimenting with touchscreens, including the ones on the Nintendo DS. This blew people's minds, as it wasn't something people were used to at the time. Sony released their own handheld device with the PlayStation Portable, aka the PSP. It was able to play games, movies, music, and store photos. The PSP was truly ahead of its time. Gaming continued to grow more and more popular, with the decade launching the Nintendo GameCube, Xbox, and the PlayStation 2. The decade later launched the three consoles' successors, the Nintendo Wii, Xbox 360, and the PlayStation 3. Yet the 2000s also had a Dance Dance Revolution arcade craze, with people even playing from home with a dance pad. The 2010s With technology continuing to advance and more people gaining access to that technology, toys of the 2010s were a lot more digital than previous decades. More and more people got their hands on smartphones, which were frequently used as, essentially, digital toys. Robotic toys continued to gain popularity around this time, with one of the most well-known companies being Sphero. They collaborated with Disney and Lucasfilm on the app-enabled BB-8 droid. Based on the latest Star Wars movies, Sphero's BB-8 was programmed to show a wide range of expressions, movements, and make movie-accurate sounds. Mattel launched the Monster High doll franchise in 2010, which became a smash hit. The dolls were accompanied by an animated web series along with a few movies. When Mattel rebooted the franchise and aimed it towards a younger audience, however, sales numbers fell drastically, leading to the subsequent cancellation of the toy line and franchise. Mattel has revived the brand for 2022 with hopes it will reach close to its original success. When Disney's Frozen became one of the highest-grossing movies of all time, Frozen movie merchandise ranked number one on holiday wish lists. Anna, Elsa, and Olaf were characters that resonated with many. Even people who hadn't seen the movie wanted the toys. Several video games in the 2010s implemented a Toys to Life feature. This feature had players buying toys in the real world, which were then used to interact inside the game. These games included Disney Infinity, LEGO Dimensions, and Starlink Battle for Atlas, all three of which have since been discontinued. However, Skylanders and Nintendo's Amiibo are still going strong. Many kids today have turned their attention from physical toys towards virtual collectibles. The most prominent example are the items in the Fortnite item shop. Spending real money on V-Bucks allows players to purchase cosmetic items for their in-game character. Perhaps the most popular collectible to emerge during the 2010s is the Funko Pop. They are vinyl figures representing characters in pop culture and prominent public figures in real life. Funko has amassed well over a thousand licenses, including superheroes, rock stars, and Harry Potter. If you think of a franchise, Funko probably has the license for it. The cute collectible design with the large heads and eyes continues to win over the hearts of many fans.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.